This is the Buffalo Croquet Club Six Wicked Invitational held in Delaware Park in Buffalo, New York in August of 2021. Ryan Thompson was your tournament director and tournament manager, and Paul Newbecker did the videography. This is block play in first flight between Rich Lagging there on the left at a handicap of two and a half and Bob Gannon in the big hat at a handicap of four. Looks like Gannon won the toss. All right, she's ready. Time is ready. Board. She's okay. Have a good game, sir. You too. Remember, I bet on you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Is he going to throw the game? I hope so. I think Bob Gannon is a member of the Buffalo Croquet Club. And Rich Lagging belongs to the Rochester Croquet Club, which is nearby, and he's the one who set up the lawns. We've talked before about how when you try to cram two lawns into a lawn bowling pitch, you end up with long and narrow. So these lawns are 105 feet long, but about 56 feet wide. It's pretty much the same setup that they use in Central Park and it puts the corner hoops 21 feet from the north and south boundaries and 14 feet from the east and west boundaries. These two parks, of course, have Frederick Law Olmsted in common as their designer. These guys are both good players. They both use that big wide stance for stability and they don't stalk a lot. But they still make some spectacular shots, but they also miss a lot of easy ones. That deadness board down at the end of the lawn is from another game, so don't pay any attention to it. Blue went out, so there's no deadness incurred there. This is the board you should pay attention to, which includes clip position in addition to the usual deadness board information.
I don't know the exact launch speed, but it's a little slow, making that kind of shot more feasible. I don't know whether the on-court board was wrong or Bob just didn't look, but black is clearly still dead on red. The opponent didn't figure it out, though, so he gets to play on, and the board keeper is not allowed to intervene. But no advantage was accrued from that mistake. And yellow goes back to set up in front of its hoop too. Blue's clean and for hoop two. He's probably looking for whether there's a double or not because a wire wouldn't do him any good since he has a shot on yellow. Whoa. Nice 65 footer. I'm not playing very well. I'm off to it. With this? Yeah, I guess. Do right. you want an element there? That's that? How many games do you play? Only one. Okay. I will take a one and one at the moment.
game has had some devastating misses for it being ten minutes in. It's been like eight devastating <laughs> misses. In this one? Yeah. Are you playing? No. I'm just throwing it. We've never videoed somebody before with such an aggressively golf style position on yeah. roll shots. He sure makes it work, though. Watch how he doesn't stalk this at all. It's a real testimony to his talent that he can play as well as he does, leaving out what most instructors think is a pretty important element to almost every croquet stroke. No offense intended by that observation, of course. Love it when the opponent stuffs one back. Unfortunately, black's dead on red, so he's going to have to make the long shot on yellow and then use yellow to cannon red through one back in order to use one back tactics. Probably not going to happen. Nice two back pioneer for red. Uh, it was all kinds of discussion about this ball position. Advice? I don't know. For sure, it needs a referee if he's going to take the shot. Like, if we're just playing around, I like. I like playing AC. I think Jim Irwin was called to referee the hoop shot, which he then decided not to take. Leaving blue three ball dead for the moment at least.
He is the one back clearance for blue. And now because yellow is dead on red, black has the advantage in deadness rotation and can leave two balls out, giving blue a rush to its hoop. Yellow, however, does not have that same advantage and is taking a bit of a risk leaving two balls out. Blue and black are only down by two. And he could just put blue on the east boundary, but since red and yellow are both well off the south boundary, and both blue and black are for hoop four, this is a good chance to get something started. Stop. There you go. Good job. <laughs> All right. Decisions, decisions. Yes, there's always decision. Ah! I should have waited. There's a bee flying bee. around. Oh. <laughs> While a bee definitely qualifies as an outside agent, the interference has to be with a ball to be called and have the shot replayed. An alternative choice here would have been to kick yellow over toward three back and then make the hoop off of blue. Would make the break easier to keep going. He already has a four-back Pioneer. There's no need to get yellow very far out. And if you don't prioritize, you're not going to get what you want. What, me worry? He's thinking about the leave now. Yellow is for two, and it is live on the spent ball blue. Let's see if he thinks it's worth coming to get blue and getting it down where yellow can use it to get started.
in general, you're less likely to end up last dead on partner if you place partner at the end of the leave instead of now. For that to work, though, he would have to have had blue down there to be placed at hoop two before he makes rover. And since blue's so far away, that's not going to work. And so he'll settle for a truly excellent placement of yellow in front of its hoop. And no worries about the four yarder he left on black. Needs to put black far away from hoop two now. But not that far away. Rich is up by seven. He could just put yellow in corner three to advance it. But looks like he'd rather come up here and harass blue and black, which are both for hoop four, not to mention that double target he just missed. Bob needs to get going, and blue's the right ball to do it with because he could then peel red through rover and peg it out at the end of his break but with all the help on the sidelines it's going to be a challenge Black ended up over there when he shot and missed from corner one. So he probably wasn't planning on this, but he's sure going to take advantage of it. And the setup is perfect because black is cleaning for hoop four. Yellow, the spent ball, is sitting on the south boundary about level with hoop five. So he can get around and peel and peg out red. He's got it made.
Okay, so we only got one hoop out of it. Red's joining up with yellow on the south boundary. Yellows for hoop three and clean. You sort of wonder why he didn't send red to corner three instead of coming up here with it. He's giving yellow a rush to his hoop from a hundred feet away. This rush is what separates the big boys from the rest of us. Look at that shot. If he can do that and the roque he's going to make after he makes this hoop, yeah. who needs the rush? Jump a ball. He's jumping, a, he's jumping a dead ball. He's already marked it. There's something to be said for confidence in this game. He could finish. The rover peel and peg out 
with three balls is a lot easier in American rules than it is in AC. Don't say it, you can't tell him. And you can't even tell him now until he puts that clip on the wrong hoop, which he just did. And if you're keeping the board, you'd put it up like this until Bob declares his one back clearance, which I assume he will do. When a player goes for a wrong hoop, you can only intervene if he tries to take an unearned continuation shot or has an incorrect clip position. I didn't hear it, but I'm going to assume that he cleared blue, so now he's only dead on yellow and blue is still for hoop six. He had another fabulous rush set up from a long way away, but it does leave black a real opportunity if he can hit blue now, because black is for hoop four, but blue is on the boundary.
of Wiley's four humors, I think Rich's style best fits the Monte Carlo category. Hell with the odds, this is the way I like to play. And he does it well indeed. This will be interesting. That's Blue's hoop, but Blue is dead on yellow. He's going to have to do a fancy cannon or else set up something for black, which is his back ball and probably preferable anyway. He could probably get the cannon done, but if he does, he's more likely than not going to stick red in that hoop and then not be able to make it except with a jump shot. Red is only live on blue. He could just send blue to black's hoop four and take the chance that red can't make the roquet. Okay. Not the best place for red if he wants to get something going for black right now. So he's going to set for blue in its next turn, it looks like. Black clean in for hoop four. That's a little cheeky. The body language says it all in this game. Can he get the rush to peeling position? He could do a posthumous peel now. 
or even just Jaws, red while he goes to the peg. He's responsible for both blue and black, but blue's three ball dead, and black has an easy shot on blue, so there's no wiring lift involved. Red is clean now, blue is three ball. Just give red a rush to the peg, it can peg out both balls. There is one last gasp available. Can he make hoop six from there? Yogi Berra reigns supreme. It ain't over till it's over. Saving shot there. <laughs> At least the folks foam it. Now, yeah, piece of cake, four ball break to the peg. Peg out red and let black finish the game and win it. Blue may be first ball in the last turns. I don't know for sure. Another big dream dashed by a simple hoop shot. If red can see blue, this should be over. Rushing this ball into the peg is a disaster in AC, but the American rules, if he did that, yellow goes in the box, red gets placed nine inches from the peg, and he has two shots from nine inches to peg out. So in a game mixing all kinds of sports metaphors, evoking Yogi Berra, Doug Flutie, and probably Arnold Palmer, Rich Lagging in a distinctly Monte Carlo style of croquet beats Bob Gannon, 24 to 9 in first flight in the Buffalo Croquet Club six wicket invitational. <laughs> 